Photo editing is now really easy. I only started taking photos about three years ago and I remember at that time it would take me over an hour to do something as simple as just replacing the sky. Obviously AI tools and photo editors have come so much further than that now. We're actually at the point where they can correct mistakes that you made in your camera after the fact. So let's just say you took an image and you missed focus completely or your camera settings were totally off and now your image has a ton of grain in it. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, this can literally be life-saving. Imagine having to call a client and being like, hey, we need to reshoot this entire shoot because you missed focus on a couple of photos. That could cost you tens of thousands of dollars in some cases. Or if you're a hobbyist and you flew halfway across the world to take a photo you really like and you sit down at your computer and you go to edit it and it's out of focus. You're obviously not gonna fly back to that destination to retake that photo. So today I'm gonna teach you guys how to edit or fix your photos like a professional and this only takes just a few clicks and I promise you this is going to blow your mind. Today's video is sponsored by Luminar Neo but they didn't give me any guidelines as to what they wanted me to do in this video. They just said, hey, here's our software. Um, go crazy with it and that's exactly what I did. And so I've been playing around with Luminar Neo for a couple of weeks now and after testing it a bunch, these are my four favorite tools in the software that I think are going to become essential and standard in the photography industry. Okay, so we're gonna start off by talking about Super Sharp and this is gonna let you snap focus onto subjects that you might have missed while shooting in camera. I'll start with a super simple example first and then I'll dive into something a little bit more complicated. So here's an image I took in Milan of this building with the Gucci symbol or Gucci logo and obviously that's what I wanted to be in focus and it doesn't matter how long you've been taking photos for, you're gonna miss focus. So I accidentally caught the foliage over here. So what I can do is if I head into edit and then I go into tools and I select super sharp, um, it's gonna give me a couple of levels that I can play around with it. We're gonna leave this at universal for this example and I'm just gonna crank it all the way to high and instantly Luminar applies AI sharpening to the entire image, wherever it thinks that things might be out of focus. So if I hit this eye icon to check out the before and after, you're gonna notice that this Gucci symbol is really snapping into focus. Like this is significantly better than before and I don't know any other AI tool out there that could literally help me snap focus like this. Um, now if this is a little too rich for you, you can obviously go down into middle and you'll usually get that cool AI animation whenever Luminar is doing its magic. Um, and again, if you check out the before and after here, it's not as over sharpened like the high setting, but the Gucci symbol is definitely now in focus, making this image usable. If you zoom out and you look at it from this perspective and I toggle on the sharpening on and off, you literally can't tell that this image has been sharpened. Okay, so now that we see the power of Super Sharp, let's try it on something a little bit more tricky and more advanced. So I have this image of this police car that I also took in Milan and I guess I was just off in Milan because uh, I've been missing focus a lot lately. But you can't really blame me, this police car was going pretty fast and I was trying to get one of those whip panning shots that you do of moving vehicles. Trust me, it's, it's harder than it looks. And so the text over here on the car ended up being out of focus. A lot of the car is out of focus and the background just has a ton of motion blur, which was my intention. Um, so I don't wanna sharpen everything here. I just wanna bring the police car back into focus. So same thing as before, we're gonna head into edit. I'm gonna select super sharp. And once again, I'm gonna crank it up all the way to high. I usually like to start with the highest setting and then work my way down. So again, we have this cool animation from Luminar letting us know it's doing its thing. And right away, the image is significantly sharper. The car is totally locked into focus in my opinion. If you check out the before and after, the text was totally jacked up before and now you can much more, you, you can read it a lot more clearly now. But again, it's made everything around it super sharp as well and it looks kind of jacked up. 
and that's not what we want. So in this instance, what you can do, and you can do this with any effect in Luminar, which I think is dope, is that you can mask around the area that you want the effect to apply to. So if I jump into the masking tab here, I select radial gradient, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create a circle right around just the police logo, because there is a bit of feathering window, so that feathering window is gonna allow us um, a little bit of leeway in terms of how far the sharpening spreads out and then I'm going to hit invert mask because the mask only applies to wherever um, you, you see this red overlay. So now you're going to see it's mostly just applied to the vehicle. So now if I, if I come back to adjustments and then I toggle off the sharpening effect from super sharp and I toggle it back on, check it out. Now only the car is in focus everything else from the image looks the same. So here we have our before, and then we have our after image after applying super sharp. Again, super handy tool for snapping in focus into things that you might have missed focus on while shooting can be literally a lifesaver. I'm obviously not gonna go back to Milan to take this exact photo again. Okay, so the next tool in Luminar I wanna talk about quickly is noiseless. Now this is gonna be great for all of you astrophotographers because I'm not an astrophotographer and I learned the hard way if you mess up your camera settings, you're gonna have a ton of noise in your astro photos. So here's an image I took in Jordan. Now it looks great at the surface, but if I zoom in, there is a ton of noise in this image and that's just because I completely jacked up my ISO settings. So what Noiseless does, and this is the thing that I love about it, is if I click on Noiseless, um, it's actually gonna give me a recommendation for how heavy handed it thinks I should be with the tool. So in this case, it's giving me advice to use the middle adjustment for this image. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit middle, let Luminar do its thing, and boom. Now you might not be able to tell instantly, but if I check out the before and after, Luminar does an amazing job of just removing the noise. Things don't look plasticky, which I usually find is the fact with other tools that try and remove noise. Everything looks so plasticky once the noise is removed. This actually retains all the detail in the image, which I think is dope. Now, if I actually zoom all the way out and then I disable noiseless AI, and re-enable it, you're not going to be able to tell the difference. And I think that's the good part or the or the impressive part about noiseless AI is how good of a job it does um, of removing the noise. You wouldn't even be able to tell at a surface level unless you really zoomed into the noise and checked out the before and after, which I think is awesome. Okay, next up, I want to talk about magic light. Now, magic light is literally like putting a mist filter on top of your camera after the fact. So if you took an image and you wanted it to be a little bit more glowy, you wanted some more halation or that mist glow effect around certain light sources and you weren't able to do that in camera, well Luminar lets you do this after the fact now. So I have this image of me standing inside a hot air balloon from Turkey in Cappadocia and obviously I didn't have a mist filter on at this time. I don't even think I owned one when I was a photographer at this point and obviously the flame is like super sharp. Um, which looks cool if that's if that's the look that you're going for but around light sources typically in my photos I like to have a little bit of glow so if I head into magic light um, and I let luminar do its thing I turned up the intensity a little bit instantly the glow is going to start appearing from that flame source now obviously this looks a little bit unnatural because it's creating some light beams so if we went ahead and like play, played around with some of these sliders clearness is the big one I find that if you bring clearness down um, it makes the light beams way, way less sharp. They're not really like beams. They form into like one, uh, one f uh, source of glow. So if I just play around with these a little bit, um, now this image looks like that it was taken with a mist filter on top. If we check out the before and after, that flame is creating a really solid glow in the middle of our image. And in my personal opinion, this takes this image to a whole new level. It looks way better with the glow from the flame applied. Okay, so the last effect I wanna show you inside of Luminar is gonna make it so that you never have to hit the gym ever again. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. This is not really an effect that I would personally use, um, but what this effect can do honestly blew my mind. I didn't think it was gonna work because on purpose, I chose a more difficult photo. So this is a photo of me and my wife 
when we went to Cappadocia and I didn't think it was gonna work because it had two people in the image and there was no like option for selecting people or like identifying the number of people in the image. So these are some of the portrait effects that Luminar has. Again, I would never use these, but the fact that they work this well literally blows my mind. So if I come down to body AI um, and I start sliding this shape slider, you're gonna see that it's slimming both of us down. And I thought this was crazy. I really didn't think it was gonna work because my wife is wearing a pretty thick sweater in this image. Um, it was a pretty cold morning in Cappadocia. So I, I really did not think that these sliders were gonna work, but it's able to intelligently identify what constitutes as part of the body and really just slim that part down. So if you're like, um, like a, a photographer for like, I don't know, some kind of like fashion publication and these are some of the type of retouchings that you use. Again, I don't use this in any of my work. I wouldn't do this. But if you use these tools, then this, like, this is incredible. Like the fact that you can just do this with a slider. Now they also have face AI. So again, just two sliders. Um, and if I, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit here, but if you, if you go ahead and do the slimming face slider, um, just give the AI to do its thing a little bit. It, it really does a really good natural job. Like you would never know that this had an AI slider applied to it. If I go before and after, it's a pretty significant difference when you play around with the before and after. But if I was just looking at this image at face value, like I, I would have no idea that any adjustments have been done to this. Again, if I go back to body AI, and then um, also body AI has been disabled. I don't think I saved it, but if I go ahead and slim it up, um, and then I, I and then I go before and after. Like on on the on the after, you you would never know that a filter has been applied. But when I go check out the before and after, it's, it's a pretty drastic change. Like you're gonna notice my shoulders stre are, are stretched in. Um, the, the sweater comes in, but like nothing is like distorted. Like it looks really natural. So I think these are super powerful tools used sparingly in certain situations. Again, I would never use them, but I think that the fact that the AI engine is capable of doing this is just absolutely crazy. Okay, so that's it for my favorite tools inside of Luminar Neo. Huge shout out to the Luminar Neo team for sponsoring this video. Um, I have, I do have a code for you. So it's AirBazu10 and that'll save you 10% off on your order of Luminar Neo. It is a paid service, just like any other photo editing app out there that's worth using today. Um, so yeah, use the code, save yourself a pretty penny, 10% goes a long way. Um, and yeah, that's all I have for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, keep creating.